Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another masterclass session by Innovation Mission Punjab. Uh, hi, Aparna. Thank you for joining this session. Uh, as, all, as all of us know, she's a legal expert for about over 15 years of experience and is the co-founder at Knowledge and Share Consultants. Uh, they're a leading consultant for startups setting up uh, the module. Today, we'll cover a lot of insights on intellectual property rights. Uh, what are the tools and solutions for compliances, the do's and don'ts of legal compliances, as well as uh, difference between an individual versus a company IPR. And I think that's something which a lot of people today as a founder would be keen to know as well. So uh, over to you, Aparna. We would like to know a little more about you as well as introducing you to the audience and uh, uh, how can we kind of make this more simplified? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this session. So thank you, Supriya, for introducing me and thank you, Innovation Mission, for collaborating with Knowledgeentia for conducting this session. So just as an introduction, Knowledgeentia Consultants is a corporate and intellectual property law firm. We have two offices, one in Chandigarh, that's based in Sector A, and the other is in Delhi, Greater Kailash 2. We are startup facilitators as well. So me, that's Aparna Jain, I'm a lawyer and a company secretary, so I'm practicing law. And my partner is Ms. Harinder Nirvan, and she's a registered patent attorney. So we both are even startup facilitators registered with Government of India. You can see our credentials on the Startup India website where SIPP facilitators are there. So we by name Aparna and Harinder are registered, which means that we are there to be the platform between you and the government and facilitate your IP requirements. Along with that, we also handle the entire ambit of corporate laws, compliances, registrations, advisory, Starting from the point that when you concept the idea of a startup or an entrepreneurship, what all you need to do and how you want to go about it. So we are accessible. Our website is www.knowledgeentia.com and definitely through Innovation Mission. You can contact them and they can contact us for any queries, any offline queries, any detailed discussion, or if you want to know about how to register, how to file a grant, we can assist you in the entire thing. So demystifying legal compliances by our team today. So we'll come to this. So starting from what is a startup? So I will first start on the startup aspect, then cover the IP. And if there are questions in between, we can take those as well. Or at the end, whatsoever is comfortable, depending upon how the session is, we can go ahead. I am comfortable with both things. So what is a startup? An entity, at the outset, it has to be a registered entity. When we say it's a registered entity, it excludes proprietorships and unregistered partnership firms. So an entity which up to a period of 10 years can claim the startup status. So startup came in just a few years back, but if the entity is old also, till a period of 10 years, you can file for the self-certification and be registered under DIPP as a startup. So entities should be working towards innovation, development, improvements of products or processes or services. So the difference between entrepreneurship companies and startup is that when you are doing a business which is already known, is not any niche area, but you're just starting, maybe you fall under entrepreneurship. But whether you are a startup and whether you can be registered under DIPP is a matter of innovation, is a matter that what exactly are you contributing or making any process more efficacious, more efficient, time consuming is less, using some new technology, or trying to solve a problem which was not being solved, that is why you're claiming that my entrepreneurial development is innovative. So I should be declared as a startup under DIPP so that I can claim the benefits as given by the government. So that is the difference. All entrepreneurs are not startups, but usually all startups are entrepreneurs. So I would say that the umbrella is like this. Now, any entity whose turnover is up to 100 CR would be considered under startup and can claim the benefits of the tax, the GST, the labor laws, compliances, facilitations. I what is the procedure for startup registration? At the outset, it could be either of these companies. So it could be a private limited, a limited liability partnership, a registered partnership firm, OPC, which is a one-person company, or a public limited company. So all these are covered under two laws. One is called the Companies Act, in which number, number one, three and five are covered. And the number two is limited liability partnership that is also under MCA, but there's a partnership act also. And the registered partnership firm is also under a different law called partnership act 1930. 
so what do we do first we register our company whichever entity you want to register to then you register under startup india the startup india registration is more of a self certification in which you are stating that i am an entity i am covered i am registered as private limited company or llp they have to upload the requisite documents which are basically your certificate of incorporation memorandum of association articles of association a letter from an incubator or a founder or an innovator innovator that what exactly is the innovation and if there is any funding a letter from a funder as well these all documents have to be submitted there is no requirement of anything to be notarized or anything on those line if you go on the website it is quite user friendly and as per our client's experience within 48 hours they do respond back so what are the documents required first is the recommendation letter from an incubator so if you are incubated with an innovation mission or an incubation set up by the government which is in colleges industries you can take their support that letter basically would say that this startup is working on these things and we have incubated that startup so a lot of uh, entities are there who are incubators that can be done from there any letter from any other recognized institute or department of the government under which you have worked or you have made a prototype or solved their problem so that they can recommend this startup to be registered as the startup it could be by central or state government if there is a funding uh, not less than 20% in equity an incubation fund can also give that letter all these are different different variants of the letters so for the tax exemptions if tax exemptions are required it, these are not automatic there is a section 81 ac the startup has to apply to take that tax certification if you apply with all the documents for a period of 3 years you will have a tax one this is the certificate of recognition dipp will issue once you once it is declared that this is a startup it says the name of the company it gives it a number which is a dipp number if you see on the top left dipp 3808 this number will give you the benefits under startup india tax holidays facilitation ip filing you have to give this certificate upload it and then you will get these benefits so if you see this this certificate is valid for a period of 9 years probably because the company was registered in 2018 so you will get a startup benefit only for a period of 10 years as we just discussed in the earlier slide ek 10 years ka period hai jab tak aapko startup ka benefit milega not beyond that and not the after you achieve a level of 100, 100 cr this certificate will be provided by the dipp once they certify that this startup is registered and can be uh, uh, actually exemplified as a innovative startup so dpiit for recognition self certification as i just stated you they can get income tax holidays patent application and ipi protection is at reduced rates so basically the government fees is also reduced to half for trademarks and for patent it's a 80% reduction and if you are registering if you are registered startup and you file your ip through registered facilitator like us you do not pay any professional fees as well this is a central government tool under startup india it is there easy public procurement norm so you can register with jm that's a government portal that you can provide your goods or services on you can go in for tenders you can apply you can use the startup forum for networking getting funders getting investors connecting to people in your domain finding the people in your arena to proceed further now legal entities uh, we have discussed in detail about the structure of entity the compliance and licenses required for a kind of business suppose you are in a food business you might require fssi licensing if you are in the business of leathers you might require licensing from the department of leathers that how are you procuring this license uh, li uh, sorry these kind of <laughs> how are you procuring these kind of goods all of this requires so depending on the kind of business you have to also check what all other compliances and licensing uh, things are required to run a business they should be registered you should get into proper contracts so if you are into innovation if you are a startup you are an entrepreneur confidentiality non disclosure are very essential because whatever you are doing you are capturing the idea this you came up with this idea you should protect you should have third party contracts you should have tried part type contracts you should the people you are hiring should have a proper documentation for your employees if you are getting your website developed you should have a website developer agreement so that all the copyright in the website and the content and the images remains with you and the person who is developing it does not claim to be the owner because it's a work for hire relevant ipi if it is a business with goods or services then you should file for the trademark 
depending on the goods or services. If you have any content, you are into like literary work, software, coding, a relevant copyright is required. If you have innovated a new thing, a patent would be relevant. So depending upon the kind of business, the relevant IPI should be identified and you should register it. So if you have an IPI, a proper registered company, these two things are the comfort factors for funders also. Because they see there'll be a growth because of this IP and it's a registered company, I can invest in the IP. So it helps the entire structure. If you are legally compliant, the licensing are in place, the company is proper, you show that yes, all NDAs and confidentialities were signed. So they see that this is a serious business person. They will ensure to in, uh, protect the IP. Investing them is safer. There is a risk definitely for investors, but these things are comfort factors for them. So when you work on a startup concept, how do you work? So these all are entrepreneurs, startups. First, make a business plan. Actually, finding the right people at the right time is the way your business will work. Goes okay. for I think we should open this. Uh -huh. uh, we should actually open this to the audience yeah. as well. I and mean, how do they start up with the concept? Uh, and I think uh, we should just have votes on making a business plan first versus hiring the right people, securing appropriate funding first, or building a customer base. Like, what, what is the order? Yeah, yeah. Or, what do you, because these yeah. are the people who are actually into it. So, yes, it would be good to know their yeah. thing that what do you want to do. So we'd love to know your responses uh, in the chatbot. Would uh, a yes to how many people think that making a business plan is the first, first foremost, uh, you know, thing to do before you set up your own startup concept? So, how many hands up for making a business plan first? One. Lot of no's also, Supriya. So good. <laughs> We'd like to know the the answer to a no as well. Uh, is it hiring the hiring the right people the first step to setting up your startup concept, or is it uh, securing the right funding because some of the startups require funding from day one? Okay. Uh, how many of you think that hi hiring the right people would be the first concept in this case? Okay, uh, so we're getting a big bunch of response as well. I think a lot of people do firmly believe that hiring the right people or being in the right team set up will scale your startup. So that's 100% true. Uh, so uh, I will let Aparna answer this in the best possible way in terms of how all of them are connected in a way and what is the first thing you should look at uh, first and foremost and what should be followed as well. And how is it all interlinked, interlinked as well? So I would say that actually everything is interlinked. If you have the right people together, you together make a vision. You make a business plan together. Definitely funding would come at a later stage. Customer base, you should know at least whom you are targeting. So right people and making a business plan will go hand in hand. Suppose you are two people who have come up with this idea. So you are already with one partner in this business. So you both have a vision to take it to a certain level. Then you connect, you have a, because being a startup or an entrepreneur, you will not have a very big team, but the people with the right vision should be there. People, professionals who are handling their work well with the right vision that exactly, they all also share the similar passion for that product or services to take it to the next level. So the business plan with the people is something which will go hand in hand. You can't have one first and second together, you know, later. It will be simultaneous. This is as per my experience, as per how things go. This will be a simultaneous effort. So you do have, you you will keep on having people and the business plan will actually move around with those core people who have been hired or who are working together for that passion. Then supplementary, you keep adding people, that is a separate thing. And securing appropriate funding could come at a stage of hiring or could come once the base is there, customer base is the third one, I would, I would say. So according to me, one and two will go together with the plan and the people, then is the customer base and then comes the plan. How many of you uh, have been following this will be great. Like, how did you guys start? So who started with the business plan first? And uh, did you have the right team in place? 
or the team came into the picture much later like is the vision being together i think one of the things that you mentioned very clearly is having the right vision if the team has the right vision they can connect together and make a business plan up get the right funding as well as build the right customer base so people is rightly put in the center of all of it but all of these things work in conjunction if you have the right people to do so and you have the right uh, the way to identify a customer base is also critical uh, to kind of gain funding as well but all of it connects and starts with making a business plan i think that's what i could infer from what you mentioned yes they're interlinked but if you have to start from somewhere uh, having a basic business plan and building it together with the right team to secure funding as well as building the right customer base should be the way to go yes yes we can go next so uh, okay so uh, this i think is did initially like uh, after this how do we do it to create a legal entity which is still your business name and the trademark or under the registry of name depending upon the business consult professionals definitely there's a cost to it i completely am with all your entrepreneurs that we always have limited branch but please do it with professionals because amending something which has been done is much more of an issue and it will incur you more cost than consulting a professional at a at a initial stages at a niche level so with innovation mission also you have a lot of network at your hand you have a lot of people whom you can contact with to have the professionals advice what you should do and do it that because you cannot know everything and you cannot do everything on your own there are people they are there for this work only so take their advice take the best way forward accord obtain business permits and licenses so that you are properly licensed to do what you are doing FSSAI go to the standards and weights and measures if you are into food business when you are manufacturing something in the food business there are ingredients which have to be displayed on the uh, top of your box that is also compliance that you have to take care of you cannot just print anything so everything you are going to the public at large everything needs compliances make sure you have them there when you are doing your business pan gst number tip pan number open a business bank account know your business well this is how you started legal entity types we have already done proprietorship partnership llp private limited one person public that i have explained you in detail so i'll not repeat if you have any specific queries i'll come back now everybody is asking me and that is a concern that how do you decide which type of entity we have to do so this slide is basically helping you make a choice first thing is liability what kind of business are you in do you want to be personally liable or is it better to have a separate legal entity the reason for having a legal entity is the liability separated from the owners so i am the owner i just had the brains to do it but my co owner is the one who had the finances to do it right we both come together we decide that yes let's do a business but we don't want personal assets or liabilities to come to our personal uh, bank accounts households that is why we say have a separate legal entity let's make a company we both will be 50 50 shareholders but our liability is limited to our shareholding in the company we are doing everything we are putting our brains we are putting money but tomorrow something untoward happen we should not be personally held liable that is one major reason for having a separate legal entity but if you still don't want to do a company do a firm you will be personally liable but you can start and then the in a company in any kind of entity other than the proprietorship and partnership you need to have annual reports you need to have board meetings you need to have minutes of meetings recorded all documentation should be proper so you should have a company secretary and a ca handling it plus a lawyer to advise what type of contracts you need to do depending on your identity the taxation structure works so normally in india is a 30% taxation which means that a company who is doing business a private or public limited company after all the expenses are deducted they have to pay a tax of 30 so at times you want to reduce it so you say proprietorship is the best usme individual ke aapki sare exemptions mil jayenge hamara business abhi bahut chota hai we don't want to do a company so all these are factors that you have to balance out and decide what kind of entity ownership transfer jo proprietor hota hai wo 100% owner hota hai jo partner hota hai wo 50% ओनर होता है या जितने भी परसेंटेज का वो नॉर्मल पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म में शेयर होल्डर जो होता है प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी का इज द ओनर अप टू द वैल्यू ऑफ शेयर्स बट हाउ डू यू ट्रांसफर 
in a firm if you have yeah, just two partners and you want to retire so one partner has to give the share to the other partner or introduce a third partner fir wo do honge aur teesre retire hoga so these are all nuances so you have to see and in a sh shareholder partner a private limited company you can just transfer the shares to another person you know maybe in the family maybe the other shareholders who are there unko aap pehle transfer kar do but in a public limited company it can be openly the uh, ownership can be transferred so all these are various factors just i have listed four of them for you to decide whether you want to do what kind of entity now coming to the compliances depending on which entity decide karte ho aapko sabse pehle register karna hai uske baad aapko yearly compliances karni hai register karne ke liye kya chahiye incorporation hona chahiye registration honi chahiye partnership firm hai to stamp duty pay karoge partnership firm ek ki jo deed hoti hai wo stamp paper pe hoti hai duly signed then it gets registered with the registrar of firm jo bhi ek basic stamp duty hoti hai zyada nahi hoti you just pay that depending on the address you have to finalize the registrar of firm और अगर कंपनी होती है तो सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन इश्यू करते हैं एनसी बिजनेस लाइसेंसेस और परमिशन डिपेंड अपॉन योर टाइप ऑफ बिजनेस अगर आप फूड एंड बेवरेजेस में हैं आप इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट में है तो आपको आईईसी कोड भी चाहिए आप एफएसएसआई लोगे अगर आप ऐसा कुछ कर रहे हो जिसके अंदर आपने लेदर की एक्सेसरीज की है लेदर का बिजनेस किया तो आपको परमिशन लेनी पड़ती है गवर्नमेंट से कहां से प्रोक्योर किया है अगर आप बायोटेक्नोलॉजी में कोई बिजनेस कर रहे हो आपको एट टाइम्स अपना आईपी फाइल करके एनबीए से परमिशन लेनी पड़ती है सो इट रियली डिपेंड्स ऑन योर बिजनेस जो भी आपका बिजनेस है उसका स्कोप जब आप डिफाइन करते हो अपने बिजनेस प्लान में तब आपको ये आपको प्रोफेशनल्स बताएंगे कि आपकी क्या क्या रिक्वायरमेंट्स और लाइसेंसिंग है तो प्लीज टेक दो फाइन द रेलिवेंट आई हर चीज फाइल करना जरूरी नहीं है अगर आपका जो आई है सिर्फ एक ट्रेडमार्क है गुड्स है सर्विसेज है बट आप ऐसा कोई प्रोडक्ट बनाए हो जो ऑलरेडी सब बना रहे हो तो उसमें कुछ पेटेंटेबल नहीं है क्या आई पी एस एज एक ब्रांड देन फाइल द ब्रांड एंड द ट्रेडमार्क डोंट गो फॉर एनी पेटेंट अगर आपने कोई सॉफ्टवेयर बनाया फाइल द कॉपी राइट फॉर द सॉफ्टवेयर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन बनाई है उसका सॉफ्टवेयर कॉपी राइट होगा सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन द बिजनेस आइडेंटिफाई दी आई पी प्रोटेक्टेड ऑल दी आई पीज आर टेरिटोरियल इन नेचर ऐसा नहीं है कि आपका इंडियन आई पी इज वैलिड इन यूएस नो यू हैव टू फाइल इट सेपरेटली एंड देन सीक द प्रोटेक्शन इन दैट टेरिटरी पॉलिसीज एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्स फॉर एच आर जब आप लोगों को हायर करो एन डी एस करो कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी करो है प्रॉपर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इन द एच आर टीम अकाउंटिंग टीम वॉश कंप्लाइंस इज अ प्रिवेंशन ऑफ सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट इफ यू वुड नो दिस एनी कंपनी विच आर मोर देन टेन पीपल हैव टू हैव अ सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट कमिटी इन प्लेस सो वंस यू गो टू दैट लेवल दैट कंप्लाइंस ऑल्सो नीड टू डन एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंड एग्रीमेंट्स डोंट साइन एनी थिंग ब्लाइंडली कि हम तो छोटे हैं साइन कर लो कुछ यू विल बी इन अ प्रॉब्लम हैव अ लीगल हेल्प Get them reviewed. You should not sign on anything. कि आज तो business मिल रहा है मैं sign कर देती हूँ कि jurisdiction US हो रही है business. अगर कोई litigation होगा, do you would you ever have the finances to go to US and litigate? So sign properly. Know your document. Do not sign for the heck of signing. Business आज मिल रहा है कल वो problems भी देगा. So contracts and agreement only see the face when you have a problem, not before that. But show it to a lawyer before signing. Have things proper. sign nds and confidentiality when you are disclosing your idea to any third party so that you can openly then share your business plans projections ip involved once you have the nd and confidentiality in place you do not need to fear ki wo kal ko yahi ip khud file kar dega because you will have a document saying we shared it on this day and this is the email showing that they signed this nda then we shared it and then they had the rasti to file it before us you can litigate and counter that if you have a document startup innovation and entrepreneurship now i'll yes. come to the aspects of ipr uh, yes. aparna just just a moment i think what you covered last uh, was also very interesting in terms of how especially when you mentioned that if someone is moving geographies or especially when someone is expanding globally all of this comes you know you have to start from where you are the region where you are something which yes. is applicable to indian law might not be applicable in other countries so i think a lot of players players or partners who are working on export business might have uh you know this in purview so one of the questions which came um, you know how to get import duty exemptions is that a specific topic forum for uh, the you know the audience to know as well that especially on import businesses how does uh, one legally look at both from an indian compliance perspective as well as the company they are operating in yes, so import perspective first of all you will be liable for all taxation and registration as per india you need a iec code that's an import and export license 
with respect to the ip involved if you are importing somebody is good with a brand so make sure your agreement talks about you having the licensing rights in india to sell so suppose you have a brand let's take any brand let's take gucci for instance you are importing the belts of gucci or the garments your name should be a registered user or a permitted user or a licensee in the agreement so that you are you are authorized to import it in india so gucci is a registered brand or in india in us in europe so suppose in indian territory you are importing the goods with a brand already it is not a job work that you are importing you are importing which already have a brand and the label so you should be registered your license agreement or your distributorship agreement or your import agreement should state that you are being a registered licensee and you have a permitted user for the jurisdiction of india you are importing the goods with the brand gucci at this price for this quantity for being sold in india so being an importer you need to take these things uh, you cannot take these things lightly because if you are not a registered user the customs can stop the goods saying that gucci ke brand mein to made information nahi hai ki can the goods be imported in india by you who are you did gucci authorize you jo gucci mein india registered hai क्या आप उसके परमिटेड यूजर है देन यू हैव योर एग्रीमेंट टू शो एंड द कस्टम्स कैन सो कस्टम रेगुलेशन कस्टम क्लियरेंस इज समथिंग इम्पोर्टर्स हैव टू सी इफ यू आर इम्पोर्टिंग अ गुड्स और अ प्रोडक्ट और सर्विसेज सर्विसेज में इतनी कंप्लाइंसेज नहीं है सपोज यू आर गेटिंग अ सॉफ्टवेयर मेड और वेबसाइट मेड फ्रॉम समबडी आउट ऑफ इंडिया द रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड कंप्लाइंसेज ऑफ कस्टम्स इज नॉट देर एट ऑल द ओनली थिंग इज अबाउट टैक्सेशन वेन यू आर मेकिंग द पेमेंट और द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विसेज because the services are like basically a consultation a website development they are not tangible as such they are nothing is coming through a territorial water or a customs border so the things are very different in a import of services as compared to import of goods so depending on the type of uh, business you are in the compliances have to go in hand, hand in hand accordingly uh thanks aparna i'm sure this was indeed in, uh, helpful a uh, couple of questions did come up regarding this i think interestingly one more thing which is coming up uh, in today's uh, time and ages uh, on the electric vehicle or electric uh, business what are the kind of uh, you know the certificates etc because that also requires a bit of different bit of certification is what we see in the questions coming up as well there is an arai and an icat certificate so the question is which one do you need or either or is it both at a certain I stage can of is the main thing i can is for the domain yeah yeah is what we would need there if there any specific you can tell yeah, me then yeah. and i can check with it yeah yeah what you would need and if i'm not wrong with the energy the ministry of road transport is also making out some amendments and there are certain amendment, amendments because of which you have, the motor vehicles act has been amended to incorporate the energy vehicles how they have to be used what all has to be done so the ev seg segment has actually made a lot of amendments in a relevant laws so those amendments and uh, yeah. okay and uh, next up is what do you suggest for an edtech company would that also vary depending on what education platform are you providing or would that be a standard license uh like it's service it's a service related license but edtech what license you don't need any license for edtech company what like so, if you have a question the, the one who has asked it uh, what license are no, they they asking they talking about if there's any specific license required for an edtech business no okay. and if and someone is building an app you are putting sorry sorry to interrupt sir so if you are putting your uh, education books on a platform you are putting it there's no license as such required but if you are wanting to register or make it a part of a cbse curriculum or icse then you have to go to the ministry and get that approved that will separate thing that is other otherwise that is not that will not be called a license okay and if someone has to give these services outside india for edtech no no specific license is required the licenses you would be required for the payment like ibi approvals when the money is coming in from abroad or money is going out those things will be separate okay uh, so we can move forward on this okay. we will take up a few questions there are uh, there is just one more question regarding the section so i'll just take that last question okay. um, uh 
uh, there's something on manufacturing and appliance companies uh, that also differs, right? Like uh, in a manufacturing companies, you could be making equipment, appliances, cars, uh, manufacturing. They, they would need excise license. They would need manufacturing license, excise, uh, excise license, and uh, other licensing to operate that premises. Fire license. All these things have to be taken because if they are operating, if you could, then the licenses are as per the Industrial Premises Act. They have to be registered. The access roads to that factory should be big enough for that. Uh, all this is part of the excise and manufacturing license. And is there a uh, is there if you could recommend a portal for them to look at all of the type of companies as well as the license under it? So, the for example, for food, you said uh, MCA dot gov dot in. That is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Dot gov dot in. And every industry has a specific ministry. Suppose you are as a startup, I would suggest you also see whether you can fall under MSME, Ministry of Micro Small Enterprises. If you fall in MSME, you can register your company with MSME also. They will give you Udyam registration number. So with Udyam registration, there are a lot of benefits which come with MSME. Suppose going for the conferences, networking, investor meets, then they also have an arbitration. They also have a legal, uh, like they also have this licensing help. So MSME website where you can go and see what all is applicable and that can help. Other than that, suppose you are into, for example, if you just take handicraft. So there's an export promotion council for handicrafts in India, EPCH. You can be a member. If you are talking about importers, then there's a federation of uh, FIEO, federation of Indian exporters organization which is based in delhi and it's also based in ludhiana it has one office and uh, we are with fio since last 10 15 years so we also do a lot of sessions with fio members and we also help them on the legal compliances on the ip of territoriality so if you are with these organizations you would know how the working are practically and you can be member of these organizations and they can also assist you in suppose there are certain specific grants or there are certain benefits of advanced duty, advanced export, advanced licensing. You can take all that information from these specified organizations. And they are not, they are not uh, specified to a specific industry. They are for the importers as a whole. So FIEO would be handling all type of importers, whether, whether it is food grains, whether it is cars, energy vehicles, whether it is apparel. So they handle all importers are their members. So they can connect you with people. They can connect you with registration requirements also. So these kind of organizations are quite helpful. EPCH is also not limited to only wooden handicrafts. All kind of handicrafts, they have their big fairs, EPCH, and you can connect with those people to what all are requirements. Suppose you have to export certain handicrafts from India to the, any country. Suppose it is to Singapore. What are the requirements? They can help you out. Should we go ahead? Yes, yes, please go ahead. So now coming to startup innovation and entrepreneurship. So innovation and IPR goes hand in hand. A search is the relevant IPR. What is the relevant IPR for your product, your services, your goods? File and register. Whether it's a trademark, a copyright or patent, whatever is, is to be done, file it, register it, protect yourself. So it could be trademark, copyright, design, patents, any kind of IPR. The other IPRs also, which might not be relevant to the audience today, which are geographical indications, plant wear, IT protection, or semiconductor. So we are now going to talk about each IPR. So what is a trademark? So trademark is a word, phrase, symbol, tagline, design, or a combination of all or either of them. So cafe coffee day, a lot happens over coffee is a registered trademark. Today we say a lot happens over coffee but no exclusive rights were given to them, but together as a whole, that CCD logo with this is a registered trademark. So this helps to distinguish the source of goods of one party or organization to, from that of others. So for example, Sony. Sony is a registered trademark in all classes. Despite the fact Sony is only into electronics, nobody can even open a jewelry shop with the name Sony. So there was this interesting litigation that somebody's surname was SONI from Punjab only. And he started using S-O-N-Y, Sony Garments. So Sony, the Japanese company litigated and stated you cannot use S-O-N-Y. 
and when it came to the court the court said s o n i is a surname but not s o n y so they had to change the name from s o n y to s o n i so sony is a well known trademark hitachi is a well known trademark so nobody can do business across classes of for these trademarks without being their registered owner or a registered user so what does a trademark registration do so government if it's a startup trademark registration as i stated you just have to pay the government fees which is half startup facilitators professional fees is not payable that is payable by the government as a whole on its own and what are the goods and services so under trademark we follow a nice classification which is through wipo world intellectual property organization there are 45 classes class 1 to 34 are talk, talks about all the goods different kind of goods and class 35 to 45 are services depending upon the business depending upon what exactly are the services you are giving we first identify the class then we conduct a preliminary search ki kya ye trademark available hai is class mein agar hai then we go ahead and apprise you how to file it once you file you can start using tm along with your brand jab wo register ho jata hai tab aap i ka naam i use kar sakte ho na sir if there is no third party opposition or objection your trademark can come within a period of 6 to 9 months if there is an objection it might take longer so for startups this is one thing that trademark office is really expeditiously uh, processing the applications so for startups which you are filing we are getting the certificates in 6 8 9 months also so once registered it is valid for a period of 10 years and then you can pay the renewal fees and continue the validity of trademark even to generation and it can be assigned it can be licensed it has a trans border thing if you have a trademark in india and in us you can transfer the us rights to another company the indian rights to another so it is just a, in another intangible asset now what is a copyright so copyright is a form of ip protection which is granted to the creators of original work original authorship it could be literary work dramatic musical work cinematographic sound graphics it is not a mandatory registration but advisable so copyright is something that whatever today suppose all of us are doing this session this ppt is my copyright i have written on the left copyright all rights with the knowledge entia today you are taking notes in your diary that is your ppt that is your copyright because that is your interpretation of what i am saying so copyright bahut weak protection hai but at the same copyright is a protection which is inherent agar aapne register nahi bhi kiya aur aapne sirf ek declare kiya ki mera copyright hai it is your copyright. तो so, आज मैंने अपनी वेबसाइट बनाई आप कोई भी वेबसाइट खोलो उसमें नीचे लिखा होता है कॉपीराइट ऑल राइट्स रिजर्व और कंपनी का नाम जब आप वेब डेवलपर एग्रीमेंट करते हो आप एक स्टार्टअप हो आपने किसी और से वेबसाइट बनाई है आप उनके साथ एक एग्रीमेंट करते हो कि क्योंकि मैंने तेरे को पैसे दिए हैं इस वेबसाइट को बनाने के लिए ये सारा कंटेंट ये सारी फोटोज ये सारा मटीरियल वेबसाइट पर मिल रहा है ना कि देगा सो दैट इज कॉल्ड वेब डेवलपर एग्रीमेंट और अगर कल तुने कल को तू इस पर कॉपी नहीं फाइल कर सकता all the rights are assigned to me because i paid you for this thing similar goes for logos aap logos design karate ho apne company ke liye aap brand ka logo design karate ho jiske sath aap design karate ho aap agreement karte ho it is very essential just a one page agreement ki ye jo aap kaam kar rahe ho mere liye kar rahe ho all the intellectual property because it is a, it is an artistic work it is something which a graphic designer is doing Tomorrow the graphic designer can say कि क्योंकि मैंने खुद डेवलप किया है इसका आईपी मेरा है और आपको खरीदना है तो मुझसे खरीद लो एंड बिकॉज योर लोगो हेल्प बिकम दैट बिग ही वॉन्ट्स टू क्लेम ओनरशिप उसने कॉपी आइट भी फाइल कर दिया आपको पता भी नहीं चला उसका कॉपी आइट रजिस्टर्ड है वो कहते हैं कि आप आप कैसे यूज कर रहे हो तो मेरे अब इसके पैसे दो एंड आपको कि मैंने देखो कैश में पाँच हजार रुपये दिए तो थे बनाने के लिए लोगो वो कहेगा मुझे तो नहीं पता कोई डॉक्यूमेंट है आपके पास दिस बिलोंग्स टू सो जिसके साथ भी आप ये कर रहे हो इट इज वेरी एसेंशियल कि उसके अंदर लिखा हो ऑल द राइट्स आर साइन सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी वेरी वैलिड और थिंक अपॉन द अ लॉट ऑफ बिजनेस ओनर्स फेस दैट यू नो डोंट रियली गेट इनटू इट एट द इनिशियल स्टेज बिकॉज़ इट्स अबाउट गेटिंग द जॉब डन गेटिंग योर लोगो गेटिंग योर ब्रांड नेम सॉर्टेड इट्स नॉट रियली थॉट थ्रू एट द इनिशियल स्टेज बिकॉज़ यू आर लुकिंग एट अ कंपनी फोकस यू आर वांटिंग दैट एज अ मिनिमल mandate and not really looking into the process uh we do see those examples in person as well uh so how would you recommend like would that uh, formulation should have via contract like how you have yes. retained yes. a contract so you have a small contract, contract. Yeah. 
a small contract uh, does an email does an email confirmation work in any kind of agreement uh, it can, supporting it document it can help but it is only if the court uh, makes that a document so suppose we litigate in the court then we can show the court ye dekho maine email kiya tha is software developer ko ki ye logo banao usne mujhe teen char options bheji fir maine final kiya ye sari correspondence hai ye evidence hai ki ha maine isse kaam karaya but agar aapka contract hai to bahut hi clear cut hai email help if you have any contract email help agar aap ye kaam kar chuke ho to at least preserve those emails document them to show aap ek aur cheez as all entrepreneurs who are attending please have a file printed file of all your documents though we are in the era of technology tomorrow you don't know what cloud goes here and there aapke sare contracts jo agreements hai please them have them filed up in the court of law nothing this does not work ki maine email 10 saal pehle bheji thi wo email id nahi kaam kar ab main nikal nahi sakta they will not look into it tomorrow if you have to enforce any rights only documents sir jo bhi aapne kaam kiya please have the documents printed keep them in a file file them give them a physical copies of these documents as a lawyer i suggest this to all my clients ki mere paas aapki file hai lekin aap bhi apne paas complete kar have a hard file have a documented file ki ye maine kaam kiya ye mere cases chal rahe this is what has happened aparna if you could help with a relative with an example you would have come across of a known brand or someone where the audience can you know relate to where they have had a logo in the initial and because of this issue they had to change the overall branding of a organization because they were filed for it at a certain point uh, and it wasn't really thought through about 10 years ago when they started i will not say the name of the company but there was a software company which is based in chandigarh only I don't want to say the name of the company because probably you would know that it's uh, yeah. I am also bound by the fiduciary relationship, not to share. It's not a reported case. So they uh, they were into softwares and had a very unique and different logo, and they had uh, clients all over from India and abroad also. Instantly, because of their different type of services or they developed a software application, they had a lot of good client base, and they also started working with the government. But the logo became an issue, not the word but the artistic logo. and the other company the person who developed it sold it to somebody else the similar logo and that person filed registered and though it was slightly in a different arena of services the original owners could not use it they had to change their logo because getting into litigation would be another 10 years of litigation and they did not want to put in that time and effort so they changed the logo the name of the company remained the same the logo had to be changed because the software person who developed the logo sold it to someone else. and they did not have any documentation the fight went on we, a few legal notices were up and down exchanged but then we only advised them that uh, without going further into it concentrate on your business change the logo because you did not have the documentation at that they came to us after the water had cooled so these things do happen and especially when you have a very unique logo you have a different logo you have made efforts please have the documentation for also in places that there is it is displayed across so that means a lot of retail brands definitely have to think through it because that becomes a part of the brand identity for them and it yes, uh, changing that later on especially on tangible products it makes a lot more uh, in, you know impact when you change it many years later for a service industry it can still thrive to a point in terms of what your word of mouth your services are and that is a by product of uh, how you are representing yourself Yes. Uh, lastly, one question. Me, uh, like. I would just like to add one more thing. When you buy domain, if you have an agency, make sure that the domain is purchased in your name, in your firm's name, not in the name of the agency. It's a very small thing. You purchase a domain on your own, or you purchase it through agency. Normally, agency अपने billing कर लेती है और आपको कहती है हमने आपके लिए खरीद लिया. तो bill के ऊपर agency का नाम आता है आपका नहीं आता. So make sure that the domain is purchased in your name. So anybody who goes on to who is domain. आप वहां पे जहां पे डोमेन है उस पर ओन है आप दिखने चाहिए नॉट अगेंस सो इफ इट हैज बीन डन नेक्स्ट ईयर के रिन्यूअल के टाइम मेक श्योर योर नेम कम्स और व्हेन यू आर परचेजिंग ऑन द फर्स्ट इंस्टेंट गिव द कैटेगरी इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू द एजेंसी दैट कि मेरे नाम पे ही खरीदना चाहिए माय लाइक द फॉर्म नेम द कंपनी नेम द इंडिविजुअल नेम नॉट अगेंस
Thanks, Aparna. Uh, I think one question which the audience had was, uh, should we allow the developer to showcase logos or website in, her, in his or her portfolio? Of course, yes, you can. If you have the documentation in place, uh, it is showcasing each other's work. Of course, a lot of- There is no problem uh, in creation there because the network will increase, your brand presence increases if they showcase it. But definitely the documentation, the ownership should be- uh, Should I go ahead? Yes, please, thank you. So what is the importance of copyright? So it will restrain any kind of deformation or modification of the work if you have registered copyright. All the rights for reissuing the work, reproducing the work to the public at large will remain yours. It ensures long-term protection and it also helps you to transfer the copyright to anyone else if you have the ownership and the translation as well. Now coming to what is patent? It is one of the most valuable intellectual property rights. It's an exclusive right. It prevents the other party from exploiting your rights and it prevents from pleasuring. What is the criteria for patentability? The innovation should be novel worldwide. It is not key. Japan may hoya to I India may copy the same software bana diya patent You will not get it. The novelty has to be worldwide, though the protection is only for the Indian territory. It should have an inventive set and industrial application as well. Importance for patents is it protects the ideas, it protects from plagiarism, it freely operates business you can do if you have a patent. Funding accessibility is much better, it saves the time, money, and it creates a brand value. A few tools for management. So these were the main IPs that I discussed. That's patents, trademarks, copyrights. A patent is valid for 20 years from the date of filing. After 20 years, it comes into the public domain. Then you cannot, then you cannot uh, stop anybody once it is in public domain. Then 20 years. So one of the oldest patent is a safety pin. It came to be a patent, something that simple, but the person who innovated it actually used an oil paint, made a modification to be a safety pin. After 20 years, the world at large has the right to use it. Nobody can be stopped from using safety pin because there are no uh, exclusive rights left. Now we have a few tools for management as we had discussed that we will just share with you. There are customer CRM managing tools, Zoho, Salesforce, Sage, bookkeeping and invoice management, Recruitment tools such as Lockwee, Indeed, Shine, Quicker, which you can use. Online advertising tools like Google AdWords, featuring content, cloud-based telephone exchange platforms like Nolarity and My Operator. Now coming to fundraising. So if you have these two things in place, your legal entity is registered properly in place, your IP is protected. Now what? how are you looking at fundraising? So for fundraising, these two are imperative. So how do you get into that network? Find the kind, correct kind of people who will invest in your startup. Properly pitch, make it, make it legally compliant. Like your paperwork and documentation should be proper so that an invest, investor looks at it from a from a risk free or at least a less risk company. Then they would fund. So self finance, private equity, venture capital, bank finance, depending on the kind of business you are in. You can explore all these. Public stock market is at a very later stage. Paytm, after all these years, came up with a public. So all this time, it was investing on its own or private funding, venture capitalist. Later, it did go for a public issue, which was this year only. It got listed. So just now, a few examples of well-known startups who have done big. Cred is one example. So any of you using Cred? Do you know about Cred? Any inputs? So, been getting what does Cred do? If we today talk, what is Cred? It just amalgamated all the forums of credit cards for a user and made it a payment portal that if you pay credit card payments to me, I will give you benefits. And what people wanted benefits. So people started using Cred. At a very short time, it actually reached 6 million members. And it gives rewards of 5 CR daily if quantified into money. It's not money. It is just a portal. Because of its exchange and network with all those companies who are registered with it, it is able to give coupons, which people can convert into benefits. So that is what Cred does. Something simple is also a good business idea. So what Cred is doing is not as such major innovation. Everything was already available. Credit cards were there, payment portals were there, 
other entities were there. It just simplified and put it all together on one single platform. Farm Easy so raised a massive $350 million funding. Medlife Khaidliya Usne, it plans to reach one lakh pharmacies. Very good reach. It has put together the local pharmacies on a platform. So it is not key unki apni pharmacy chains hai. But it has tied up with pharmacies who are local so that it can serve the area where the delivery has to be done. To their app. This is what it has done. Misho raised over 500 million, growth of almost 60%, delivered more than 1 lakh supplies. So Misho is a start, uh, B2B uh, platform which people are using. Dream 11, I, I have slight of an issues about it being legal or not. I'll not go into that. Draws over 3 million, 75 million users. It is kind of a wagering and it is kind of what you say. I would say they are actually playing a lot on, they do give this disclaimer. If you see the add-on of Dream 11, that get, if you keep playing this game, it gets addicted and they do not assure of all these things for Dream 11, but it has a growth of 200%. Shadi.com was an interesting case. Second, Shadi.com filed for a trademark. Favorite, uh, Bombay High Court did not stay second Shadi.com. And later in a higher court, it went and said Shadi.com and second Shadi.com are similar. And it restrained the use of second Shadi.com because Shadi.com has already made a reputation. It already has a mark in the mark. Though it is something that generic. Hindi mein Shadi means marriage. How did they get it? Because they had a unique logo as a whole. Bit.com, the world's largest, they filed it together as one logo. And they registered this mark. So somebody who came in with Shad second Shadi.com was restrained by the phone pay and buyer pay. So uh, phone pay, uh, another ATM and PayPal are also into trademark litigation. So in phone pay and buyer pay, phone pay was denied order saying buyer pay. Somebody cannot have exclusive right on the word PE because in Hindi it just means pay. So phone and buyer are two different uh, prefixes. So the legal position did not change. They said these are different marks and they were not, buyer pay was not restrained by the court. Twiggy case study. So Twiggy, we all know, but uh, before like uh, in each, uh, now you would have seen a lot of companies have got a funding with this 10 minute Instamart delivery. Before that, Twiggy and Zomato were the only ones who were delivering food. Now recently, if people have used it, they have increased their delivery charges quite a lot. But what did it do? It integrated local manufacturers, local people who are selling food on an online portfolio so that anybody who can wants to have a food delivered can use this portal. And Swiggy Zomato has similar business model. But both of them are doing well. Maybe they're catering to different people. Free delivery structures, improved ideas, better revenue, got a lot of funding. That is what Swiggy did. And Paytm. So Paytm became India's first largest payment commerce model. Paytm has a Paytm bank. Paytm just had a public issue which did not do that well. And Paytm has a litigation going on in the trademark office against PayPal. So if you have PayPal, the color combination same hai. Dark blue and light blue. Paytm is written PayPal is TM ki jaga PAL. Likha hai. PayPal is much older as compared to Paytm. PayPal was used in U US and Europe from decades, when we had online payment, we had to do it through PayPal or directly. So PayPal has much broader uh, uh, reach abroad. But the trademark office is still, uh, the opposition proceedings are going on, that Paytm can be strained or not. No orders for strain have been passed ever till now. So certain, I just added this on my own. As a startup, as any business, there are certain ethics one should follow. Be honest in all your communication with your core team. If they know exactly how you're going, they will be with you even in the downfalls. Maintain the integrity of a business. Be loyal within the framework. Commit to excellence, what you are doing with passion, with excellence. And the reputation would travel much longer than the finances. So if you have these things in place, definitely your business would do well and do well. And thank you so much for having me. And I'm now open for questions. Uh, could you just go back to the ethics? I think that's a slide which needs more attention. Uh, 
on all fronts. I think uh, what you summarized in the last hour or so uh, comes back to all of this. I think if you're there to this and you work on a day-to-day -day perspective, everything, you wouldn't have those issues. So I think ethical principles is the first and foremost thing to kind of abide in this structure. And a lot of it will be self-answered if we follow this to the team. So I think that's a message to uh, most of the entrepreneurs here. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Abanda. Thank you for taking up all these questions and so much more. Uh, we will be sharing an email uh, with our participants in terms of feedback and questions as well. And we will be sharing that with you to take this forward. Uh, thank you so much for doing this for us. And for all the participants, we will be sharing a recorded uh, session link and it will be hosted on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, most of it will be uh, shared across the social media channels. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Dhawal has shared all the links for the, for the same. So follow us and you will be uh, tuned into what's coming next. And Aparna, uh, once again, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we do have a few more questions. Yeah, what we'll do is uh, we will take that. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll kind of patch this up one-on-one -on -one with the startups and you, and that will be taken forward because these are more specific to the entity type as well. Uh, some of the questions which have not been answered here, uh, but we'll take that forward separately. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sophia, for moderating this session, and thank you, Innovation Mission. And thank you for all the audience who have been really interactive through the chat and Q&A session. You are more than welcome to take your queries. I'm also available on LinkedIn, Aparina Jain Knowledge and Share Consulting. And otherwise, our knowledgeentia.com has a contact page also with our email ID, which is info at knowledgeentia.com. So you can get in touch with us, and it will be a pleasure to facilitate. All the best for your entrepreneurship and startups. All the very best. Thank you so much.